Elizabeth I was Queen of England and Ireland from 17 November 1558 until her death. Sometimes called the Virgin Queen, Gloriana or Good Queen Bess, the childless Elizabeth was the fifth and last monarch of the Tudor dynasty. Elizabeth was the daughter of Henry VIII by his second wife, Anne Boleyn, who was executed two and a half years after Elizabeth's birth. Anne's marriage to Henry VIII was annulled, and Elizabeth was declared illegitimate. Her half-brother, Edward VI, ruled until his death in 1553, bequeathing the crown to Lady Jane Grey and ignoring the claims of his two half-sisters, Elizabeth and the Roman Catholic Mary, in spite of statute law to the contrary. Edward's will was set aside and Mary became queen, deposing Lady Jane Grey. During Mary's reign, Elizabeth was imprisoned for nearly a year on suspicion of supporting Protestant rebels. In 1558, Elizabeth succeeded her half-sister to the throne and set out to rule by good counsel. She depended heavily on a group of trusted advisers, led by William Cecil, Baron Burley. One of her first actions as queen was the establishment of an English Protestant church, of which she became the supreme governor. This Elizabethan religious settlement was to evolve into the Church of England. It was expected that Elizabeth would marry and produce an heir to continue the Tudor line. She never did, despite numerous courtships. As she grew older, Elizabeth became famous for her virginity. A cult grew around her which was celebrated in the portraits, pageants, and literature of the day. In government, Elizabeth was more moderate than her father and half-siblings had been. One of her mottos was video atatia. In religion she was relatively tolerant and avoided systematic persecution. After 1570, when the Pope declared her illegitimate and released her subjects from obedience to her, several conspiracies threatened her life, all of which were defeated with the help of her minister's secret service. Elizabeth was cautious in foreign affairs, maneuvering between the major powers of France and Spain. She only half-heartedly supported a number of ineffective, poorly resourced military campaigns in the Netherlands, France, and Ireland. By the mid-1580s, England could no longer avoid war with Spain. England defeated the Spanish Armada in 1588 associated Elizabeth with one of the greatest military victories in English history. Elizabeth's reign is known as the Elizabethan era. The period is famous for the flourishing of English drama, led by playwrights such as William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe, and for the seafaring prowess of English adventurers such as Francis Drake. Some historians depict Elizabeth as a short-tempered, sometimes indecisive ruler, who enjoyed more than her share of luck. Towards the end of her reign, a series of economic and military problems weakened her popularity. Elizabeth is acknowledged as a charismatic performer and a dogged survivor in an era when government was ramshackle and limited, and when monarchs in neighboring countries faced internal problems that jeopardized their thrones. Such was the case with Elizabeth's rival, Mary, Queen of Scots, whom she imprisoned in 1568 and had executed in 1587. After the short reigns of Elizabeth's half-siblings, her 44 years on the throne provided welcome stability for the kingdom and helped forge a sense of national identity. Early life Elizabeth was born at Greenwich Palace and was named after both her grandmothers, Elizabeth of York and Elizabeth Howard. She was the second child of Henry VIII of England born in wedlock to survive infancy. Her mother was Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn. At birth, Elizabeth was the heiress presumptive to the throne of England. Her older half-sister, Mary, had lost her position as a legitimate heir when Henry annulled his marriage to Mary's mother, Catherine of Aragon, to marry Anne, with the intent to sire a male heir and ensure the Tudor succession. Elizabeth was baptized on 10 September, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, the Marquis of Exeter. The Duchess of Norfolk and the Dowager Marchioness of Dorset stood as her godparents. When Elizabeth was two years and eight months old, her mother was executed on 19 May 1536. 
Elizabeth was declared illegitimate and deprived of her place in the royal succession. Eleven days after Anne Boleyn's death, Henry married Jane Seymour, but she died shortly after the birth of their son, Prince Edward, in 1537. From his birth, Edward was undisputed heir apparent to the throne. Elizabeth was placed in his household and carried the chrysum, or baptismal cloth, at his christening. Elizabeth's first governess or lady mistress, Margaret Bryan, wrote that she was as toward a child and as gentle of conditions as ever I knew any in my life. By the autumn of 1537, Elizabeth was in the care of Blanche Herbert, Lady Troy, who remained her lady mistress until her retirement in late 1545 or early 1546. Catherine Champenown, better known by her later, married name of Catherine, Cat, Ashley, was appointed as Elizabeth's governess in 1537, and she remained Elizabeth's friend until her death in 1565, when Blanche Parry succeeded her as chief gentlewoman of the Privy Chamber. Champenown taught Elizabeth four languages, French, Flemish, Italian and Spanish. By the time William Grindle became her tutor in 1544, Elizabeth could write English, Latin, and Italian. Under Grindle, a talented and skillful tutor, she also progressed in French and Greek. By the time her formal education ended in 1550, she was one of the best educated women of her generation. By the end of her life, Elizabeth was also believed to speak Welsh, Cornish, Scottish and Irish in addition to English. The Venetian ambassador stated in 1603 that she possessed these languages so thoroughly that each appeared to be her native tongue. Historian Mark Stoyle suggests that she was probably taught Cornish by William Killigrew groom of the Privy Chamber and later Chamberlain of the Exchequer, Thomas Seymour. Henry VIII died in 1547 and Elizabeth's half-brother, Edward VI, became king at age nine. Catherine Parr, Henry's widow, soon married Thomas Seymour of Sudley, Edward VI's her uncle and the brother of the Lord Protector, Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset. The couple took Elizabeth into their household at Chelsea. There Elizabeth experienced an emotional crisis that some historians believe affected her for the rest of her life. Seymour, approaching age 40 but having charm in a powerful sex appeal, engaged in romps and horseplay with the 14-year-old Elizabeth. These included entering her bedroom in his nightgown, tickling her and slapping her on the buttocks. Pa, rather than confront her husband over his inappropriate activities, joined in. Twice she accompanied him in tickling Elizabeth and once held her while he cut her black gown into a thousand pieces. However, after Pa discovered the pair in an embrace, she ended this state of affairs. In May 1548, Elizabeth was sent away. However, Thomas Seymour continued scheming to control the royal family and tried to have himself appointed the governor of the king's person. When Pa died after childbirth on 5 September 1548, he renewed his attentions towards Elizabeth intent on marrying her. The details of his former behavior towards Elizabeth emerged, and for his brother and the king's council, this was the last straw. In January 1549, Seymour was arrested on suspicion of plotting to marry Elizabeth and overthrow the Lord Protector. Elizabeth, living at Hatfield House, would admit nothing. Her stubbornness exasperated her interrogator, Sir Robert Tyrrett, who reported, I do see it in her face that she is guilty. Seymour was beheaded on 20 March 1549. Mary I's reign. Edward VI died on 6 July 1553, aged 15. His will swept aside the succession to the Crown Act 1543, excluded both Mary and Elizabeth from the succession, and instead declared as his heir Lady Jane Grey, granddaughter of Henry VIII's sister Mary, Duchess of Suffolk. Lady Jane was proclaimed Queen by the Privy Council, but her support quickly crumbled, and she was deposed after nine days. 
On 3 August 1553, Mary rode triumphantly into London, with Elizabeth at her side. The show of solidarity between the sisters did not last long. Mary, a devout Catholic, was determined to crush the Protestant faith in which Elizabeth had been educated, and she ordered that everyone attend Catholic Mass. Elizabeth had to outwardly conform. Mary's initial popularity ebbed away in 1554 when she announced plans to marry Prince Philip of Spain, the son of Emperor Charles V and an active Catholic. Discontent spread rapidly through the country, and many looked to Elizabeth as a focus for their opposition to Mary's religious policies. In January and February 1554, Wyatt's rebellion broke out, it was soon suppressed. Elizabeth was brought to court, and interrogated regarding her role, and on 18 March, she was imprisoned in the Tower of London. Elizabeth fervently protested her innocence. Though it is unlikely that she had plotted with the rebels, some of them were known to have approached her. Mary's closest confidant, Charles V's ambassador Simon Renard, argued that her throne would never be safe while Elizabeth lived, and the Chancellor, Stephen Gardner, worked to have Elizabeth put on trial. Elizabeth's supporters in the government, including Lord Paget, convinced Mary to spare her sister in the absence of hard evidence against her. Instead, on the 22nd of May, Elizabeth was moved from the tower to Woodstock, where she was to spend almost a year under house arrest in the charge of Sir Henry Beddingfield. Crowds cheered her all along the way. On 17 April 1555, Elizabeth was recalled to court to attend the final stages of Mary's apparent pregnancy. If Mary and her child died, Elizabeth would become queen. If, on the other hand, Mary gave birth to a healthy child, Elizabeth's chances of becoming queen would recede sharply. When it became clear that Mary was not pregnant, no one believed any longer that she could have a child. Elizabeth's succession seemed assured. King Philip, who ascended the Spanish throne in 1556, acknowledged the new political reality and cultivated his sister-in-law. She was a better ally than the chief alternative, Mary, Queen of Scots, who had grown up in France and was betrothed to the Dauphin of France. When his wife fell ill in 1558, King Philip sent the Count of Ferrier to consult with Elizabeth. This interview was conducted at Hatfield House, where she had returned to live in October 1555. By October 1558, Elizabeth was already making plans for her government. On 6 November, Mary recognized Elizabeth as her heir. On 17 November 1558, Mary died and Elizabeth succeeded to the throne. Accession Elizabeth became queen at the age of 25 and declared her intentions to her council and other peers who had come to Hatfield to swear allegiance. The speech contains the first record of her adoption of the medieval political theology of the sovereigns, two bodies the body natural and the body politic. My lords, the law of nature moves me to sorrow for my sister, the burden that is fallen upon me makes me amazed, and yet, considering I am God's creature, ordained to obey his appointment, I will thereto yield, desiring from the bottom of my heart that I may have assistance of his grace to be the minister of his heavenly will in this office now committed to me. And as I'm but one body naturally considered, though by his permission a body politic to govern, so shall I desire you all to be assistant to me, that I with my ruling and you with your service may make a good account to Almighty God and leave some comfort to our posterity on earth. I mean to direct all my actions by good advice and counsel, as her triumphal progress wound through the city on the eve of the coronation ceremony. She was welcomed wholeheartedly by the citizens and greeted by orations and pageants, most with a strong Protestant flavor. Elizabeth's open and gracious responses endeared her to the spectators, who were wonderfully ravished. The following day, 15 January 1559, Elizabeth was crowned and anointed by Owen Oglethorpe, the Catholic Bishop of Carlisle, in Westminster Abbey. She was then presented for the people's acceptance, amidst a deafening noise of organs, fifes, trumpets, drums, and bells. 
church settlement. Elizabeth's personal religious convictions have been much debated by scholars. She was a Protestant, but kept Catholic symbols, and downplayed the role of sermons in defiance of a key Protestant belief. In terms of public policy she favored pragmatism in dealing with religious matters. The question of her legitimacy was a key concern. Although she was technically illegitimate under both Protestant and Catholic law, her retroactively declared illegitimacy under the English Church was not a serious bar compared to having never been legitimate as the Catholics claimed she was. For this reason alone, it was never in serious doubt that Elizabeth would embrace Protestantism. Elizabeth and her advisers perceived the threat of a Catholic crusade against heretical England. Elizabeth therefore sought a Protestant solution that would not offend Catholics too greatly while addressing the desires of English Protestants. She would not tolerate the more radical Puritans though, who were pushing for far-reaching reforms. As a result, the Parliament of 1559 started to legislate for a church based on the Protestant settlement of Edward VI, with the monarch as its head, but with many Catholic elements, such as priestly vestments. The House of Commons backed the proposals strongly, but the Bill of Supremacy met opposition in the House of Lords, particularly from the bishops. Elizabeth was fortunate that many bishoprics were vacant at the time, including the Archbishopric of Canterbury. This enabled supporters amongst peers to outvote the bishops and conservative peers. Nevertheless, Elizabeth was forced to accept the title of Supreme Governor of the Church of England rather than the more contentious title of Supreme Head, which many thought unacceptable for a woman to bear. The new Act of Supremacy became law on 8 May 1559. All public officials were to swear an oath of loyalty to the monarch as the supreme governor or risk disqualification from office. The heresy laws were repealed. To avoid a repeat of the persecution of dissenters practiced by Mary, at the same time, a new Act of Uniformity was passed which made attendance at church and the use of an adapted version of the 1552 Book of Common Prayer compulsory, though the penalties for recusancy, or failure to attend and conform, were not extreme.